This press is for classical education. Maloa no go funa ana amina funa opuzi la class. Greek Latin. Greek Latin. Particularly Latin. Maga maga chilati. I want that to be clearly understood by everybody. If you do not like Latin, don't come. Reading is like breathing to me. I can't stop. Books are necessary for my survival. Every school I've ever been to has had a library card, and I never leave home without at least one board book. During my leisure time, I enjoy going to libraries, the one at Kamuzu Academy being my most visited. And I never pass up the opportunity to go through countless or so searching for the perfect book. But I don't think I've ever loved a library as much as I do. Hadrian's Library, which is ironic given that it's the only library I've ever been to that doesn't have any books. It's Hadrian's love of knowledge that draws me to his character. I think because I share that love for reasons I've written about at length but still cannot fully articulate. At Hadrian's Library, like all other libraries, is where I feel my love of books the most acutely and profoundly. I wanted to do something that was that resonated with me, something that was designed for me. I adore Hadrian's Library, and if I can make you love it as much as I do, I'd be content. And with that, I produce to you, introduce to you my presentation, The Library of Hadrian, a presentation by me, Michelle McCullough. And with that, I'd like to call the first chapter we'll be looking at at, in its essence, what is it? In AD 132, Roman Emperor Hadrian built Hadrian's library on the north side of Athens, Acropolis, on the side of housing from the late Hellenistic and early Roman periods. The library was built. And it was definitely built to impress because the library was the largest in Athens. The facility, other than library uses, was utilized to keep important books in a safe place, maintain a repository for official and legal documents, provide a venue for lectures, have a number of schools of philosophy. The building was also home to a number of important educational and philosophical institutions. Even though the building was referred to as Hadrian's Library since the beginning of the 19th century, it, it is essential to keep in mind that it was so much more than that. Archaeologists are aware that the structure closely resembles the complex of Roman temple passes, also known as the Temple of Peace, which was one of a series of imperial fora built by the Roman Emperor Hadrian. The garden, artifacts, library, and lecture halls of Hadrian's library gave the people of Athens a new multi-purpose public square and a cultural center. Some would say it was the heart of the city, and I surely think it was. Now that you've got the gist on what it was, we need to know how it came to be. I want to call this next chapter From Play to Marble. How was it constructed? Hadrian was a huge fan of Greek culture, just like I am. And he built a lot of important things in Athens, like this grand library. An entrance with Corinthian style propylon, a high surrounding walls with long niches, oikoi and exodrine. A courtyard with a courtyard inside with columns surrounding it and a decorative oblong pool in the middle. It was 58 meters long and 13 meters wide, surrounded by a garden. So you can imagine that this was the long oblong pool, um, the high surrounding walls, and its currently and proper style entrance. Papyrus scrolls were typically used to store documents, which were kept in armaria, partitioned wooden cabinets that were inserted into nooks in the walls of the room. In addition, there were places where visit visitors could listen to lectures and speakers and have intellectual discussions with one another in a quiet library garden. Just the thought of 
reading or listening to a lecture of so much passion outside in a quiet, beautiful landscape, I think is what drew Athenians to the library the most. Pausians famously stated that the building with 100 columns of fire and marble, with halls painted, ceilings, alabaster walls, and niches with statues, in which books were kept, the Attica. This description of the library is well known and for the most part accurate. Every good thing must come to an end, and much like all other things, Hagen's library would soon suffer the same fate. I introduce to you and making the maid. How was it deconstructed? The library was significantly damaged during the Heruli invasion in 267 CE and in 277 CE. When the city wanted to better protect itself, the library was added to a fortification wall, basically saying that they were in deep trouble and they really needed like protection. So they thought, why not use the library? And hence the fortification wall. Herculius, the pr perfectus eparch of the Illyricum from 407 to 12 CE, renovated the library and erected a statue of him at the entrance. On the left side of the entrance, the inscription associated with the statue can still be seen. Although this four apse structure may have construct been constructed in the middle of the 5th century CE, it is possible that an early Christian church was built in the central garden space at the time. In fact, the first Christian church in Athens was demolished in the 6th century CE, and its place was taken by a massive three-aisled basilica. But the past has had its glory, but we can't focus too hard on it. After all, we are in the 21st century. But what of this grand library? What happened to it yesterday? How was it like today? What will it be like tomorrow? This chapter, I call yesterday's tomorrow, today. What is it like now? Hadrian's library has only been recently restored and the site was only reopened to the public in 2016, which was roughly seven years ago. You can imagine how long it took since its unprecedented destruction. There are only a few surviving walls, broken staircase sections, and fallen columns to be seen. In the middle of the city, it's mostly just an open field where something once remarkable stood. Now it's home to stray cats, dogs, whatever wild animals lie in the area. Despite everything, there is still a haunting romance to it. At the library, you can almost feel Hadrian's presence. You can also feel how much it meant to him how much he loved Athens and probably loved his library there the most. And my imagination is piqued about, about some Hadrian's character, the last great Roman emperor. We learn from Hadrian why walls only serve to keep people in and not out. We learn that holding on to something we love too tightly can eventually cause it to fall apart and that being afraid of the unknown is a path to destruction. Not only was Hadrian a genius as an emperor, but was also an art enthusiast, a poet, and a frequent traveler. However, his failure, of which he was unquestionably the architect, remains his most memorable failure. Rome would surely fall. However, the construction of this library sped up the inevitable decline. Additionally, my imagination is piqued about something about Hadrian's character. We learn, <laughs> additionally, Hadrian was not given, Hadrian's wall was not given its name by accident. Athens was dear to him. He also left a lasting impression on the city, which he spent years beautifying and promoting as a cultural hub of the Roman Empire. In Plaka, if you turn right down the street, you'll be facing a row of houses with a perfect view of Hadrian's arc. In essence, what is left of this library is a beautiful pile of ruins near Monastrike Station. The first of the buildings was built in 132 AD, and they have been sitting on the same spot ever since, slowly falling apart. However, due to their size, they have never completely reintegrated into the landscape. 
Although nature is a powerful force, it seems it cannot fully conquer marble. I'd like to end with basically admiring one of the Emperor Hadrian's quotes. It says, He Athene genitaria enai oti opao gia proti fora koitaze kainis ekupna to eatoto. Hoi protes mon patrides ita ta biblia kaisa mikrote bathmo um, ta skolea. The, truth, the true birthplace of knowledge is where one first looks intelligently at oneself. My first homeland were books, and to a lesser extent, schools, Emperor Hadrian. You could see how much knowledge, power, and books had a relationship. So I'd like to ask you guys, as I end my presentation, to indulge in the library of the great Emperor Hadrian. Thank you.